Hello Jaco! In today's video I'll talk about Krita and how I use it to make my YouTube thumbnails. Now let's get digital. Krita is open source and it is free and if you want to download it you can simply do that. What I suggest you do though is if you use a font manager, I use Fontbase and if you use one of those don't install the latest version which at this moment is version 5.21 but install an older one which if we go all the way to the end it is 5.14 I don't really know why this is the last version that you can download as I have version 5.15 as you can see I switched from Photoshop to Krita because I want to use software that is either one-time payment or free. Now Krita does support PSD import. I have one file here and if I do that, now I'm not really sure if this is the actual PSD that I've imported. So let me test a different one. So let's go to open. I'll go to this one and I'll open this PSD. And the final image should be this one. And as you can see, once you do that, this is a complete mess. So while you can import a PSD file, it doesn't really import it as you would expect. Let me make a new file. I'll just leave it as is, but if you want YouTube thumbnail, this would be 128 by 720. So let's do that. Now this is huge. You can simply use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Brush is selected by default. You can right click to change the size or you can change the size up here. Now what you may want to do if you're coming from Photoshop is using the brush and if you want to make straight lines in Photoshop you do that by hold shift and dragging a line. You can also do that here but by default you won't be able to do that. To achieve that you'll have to go to settings, configure Krita the canvas input settings will have to change the input profile to Photoshop compatible. And let's see, for a keyboard shortcuts, you'll also want to change the shortcut scheme to Photoshop compatible. Once you do that, you'll be able to make a straight line. Though it's not as perfect as it is in Photoshop. Yeah, as you can see, because in Photoshop you could just click once, click twice and it would make the straight line between the points that you click, which is not the case in Krita. Now let's take a look at the text. Why I said that you don't want to download the latest version is if you use font manager. So we have a placeholder text, that's fine. I'll just increase the size. Now this is really clunky because you have to click save all of the time so you can see the change how this actually looks like. So the text tool does need some work which is something that they've done in version 5.2 but unfortunately it does not work with font managers. So this is how you'll be able to change the text. Now you can use version 5.2 but if you do you'll have to actually install the fonts. So in case of font managers you don't actually install the fonts, you just enable or disable them. Now you can easily change the text. As you can see, you can also scroll up and down. Use the arrows up and down to change. Maybe just affect the selected text. But again, to actually see it, you have to press save. And in this case, as you can see, the changes to the text don't apply. So in this case you would have to make two separate texts. What's also an issue, let me make a new line. So now this is a new line. You can't make indentations, like I've done a huge amount, but it only counts one space. So if indentation is what you need, you will also have to make a, a separate text. The other way how you can do it, at least if you need line spacing, you'll have to go to the SVG source, 
find the text. So we have text here and increase or decrease the DY size. So let's see, I can do 170. And maybe if I change the X to 100, so you can do indentation in this way, which is definitely not ideal. Now, as for the text, you can also select it. Click on the eyedropper tool to make a selection, but you can just select anything. No idea where it got this color from. And also no idea why it jumped to that line. So now we have some placeholder text. As you can see, this is a vector layer, but if you paint, this is a raster layer, which is different as you can't use a brush on a vector layer, as you can see. Now what you may need to do is to mask a piece of the text out or an image. So let me take this paint layer and maybe you just want to change this part. How you would apply what I have just painted over the text. So just these last letters are affected. You have to make a group so I have the text and this paint node, I'll press Ctrl G to make a group. And now with this layer selected, I'll simply click alpha. And now this makes a mask. I'll now use the eraser tool to make this tiny adjustment like so. As for the brushes, you can click on them, select one. Let's see settings, you have the settings here and you can make the adjustments to each individual brush. Now the way I do my thumbnails is I have some border around. To do that, I need to make a new paint layer and put it outside of the group. Now I could do this with the brush and the line tool. That's one way how you can do it. Another way would be to select the rectangle make a rectangle and this will apply a brush. Like in Photoshop, you can then use Ctrl U to make some adjustments. In this case, you want to maybe colorize. And now usually what I do is I import some image in. Let me put just this one in. You'll insert the image as new layer. This gets applied on the top of the layer that was selected. So this layer was selected. If this one was selected, it would be applied like this outside of the group. Now with the image selected, you can use Ctrl T, but you'll have to zoom out. And you need to hold Shift. So the aspect is the same. Otherwise, it will do something like this. If you make a copy or a duplicate, this actually stays in place. With Photoshop, I think that when you made a copy and pasted it, it was just put somewhere random. Now with the image selected, you can press Ctrl T and if it doesn't get selected by default, you may need to click on the element as well so you can then move it. At the moment, I'm just holding Alt and if you shift, it will do the same as in Photoshop so it scales from the center. Maybe change the color. And now we have the apply modes. We have a bunch of them, but you can simply select them and scroll over them to see what they do. And then lastly, you want to export the image, probably as a PNG. So you'll have to go to file, export. You have a lot of formats as you can see and just find PNG and give it a name. Now Krita is not yet at the level of Photoshop, but it is free, unlike Photoshop, which has a monthly subscription. I do also have Clip Studio Paint, which is one-time payment, but I don't have it installed at the moment, so I can't really say if it's better than Krita when making thumbnails. But with Krita, you also have the option of making animations, just like in Photoshop. In Clip Studio Paint, you have to pay a bit extra to have that functionality, I believe. And Krita also has the ability to make pixel art, which is also something that I may want to do a bit down the line when I'll be making my own games. And if you found this video helpful, 
you know what to do. I'm Simon, and until next time, Jacko, keep it digital.